Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I have some fabric and pattern plans for you. All right, so this is always fun, right? The time of year where you're sort of through with all the Christmas stuff and launching into January. And okay, yes, January is like almost over. So we can call this kind of rest of winter into spring plans because here in Spain, it's freezing first thing in the morning, like really, really cold, but then it really warms up and it's sort of 12, 12, 13, 14 degrees and it feels even warmer in the sun. So I feel like not too long from now, I'm gonna be able to start wearing some more springy things. So I have a selection of five fabrics here and the patterns, some of them I am more or less set on in terms of what to make. And so I'm gonna ask that if you can please comment below when I say, do you want this pattern or this pattern? Because I really do need help <laughs> choosing what to make when, or sorry, of what to make from these beautiful fabrics. Okay, so I've got my notes here. I'm gonna start with one that I'm pretty sure that I know what I wanna make. And this is a gorgeous green sweater knit. I think they call it Ottoman sweater knit. I think there's still some left on this site. This is from Meter Meter. It's so soft and drapey and glorious. I think the color is really good on me. I've been drawn to greens the last couple years and before that never, but lately I think this emerald color, I don't know if you guys have had your colors done now all of a sudden it's like, I don't know, I'm seeing it more and more. It's not all of a sudden, of course, it's been around for ages, but especially in the knitting world, for some reason I'm seeing a lot of people doing their colors and I apparently am a, deep winter which means we might have even talked about this before but it means um like jewel tones which traditionally have not been what i've been drawn to if you if you have been with me for a while um and you think back to my older sewing videos it was a lot of blue beige white very neutral um but every once in a while when i wore sort of a deeper richer color i did notice that it was it would set off my skin tone and my eyes and my hair better. This does have a little bit of a texture to it if you look up close. And for this, I was browsing on Instagram or maybe it was Pinterest and I came across the Baila bodysuit from Charlotte, Charlotte Jobert patterns. I had never heard of her before, but she has several patterns. She also has some courses in French on the site Artisan, if you are familiar with that. Um, she's got some bathing suits, she's got some body suits uh, and dresses. And so the Baila is both a dress and a bodysuit, depending on which you buy. And I'll put in some pictures. I thought this was really cool, really stunning on that model, The that burgundy color is stunning on her. Um, but I also noticed in one of the later pictures that they also just had the straight arm. I'm hoping that that's included in the pattern. I don't know for sure, but I can always just superimpose another t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt pattern in terms of the sleeves. I don't think I'd have enough to do the big voluminous sleeve. And also I don't really love that look. I think it's on its way out. I think it's kind of crested <laughs> it's on its way in my opinion, uh, so I'd rather go a little more classic. With that said, I might be stretching on meterage. I only have a meter here, but even if I can't do the bodysuit part and I can only do the top, um, I, I think it, it's gonna be very striking and a really nice addition to my wardrobe. So I think that's the only one that I'm set on. I'm gonna buy that pattern today and that's probably gonna be my next make. Okay, next, I have this also from that same order from Meter Meter when they were clearing out a bunch of their remnants and they always do, they always do have remnants. So the way to find that, and I'll put it on the screen, you go to shop and then you go to fabric and then there's a plus sign with like nothing there. And when you click that, you get sales or discounted fabric or remnants or whatever it's called. That's how I always find the remnants, even though sometimes they send out an email and it used to be that they only had them every once in a while and now I find that they pretty much always have a certain number of remnants. So this color is called, is it called clay or something to that effect? I think they still actually might have this on the website. This is a rib fabric. I have, I have uh, a meter by 150. It's a viscose nylon. And with this, I have a couple of ideas. So 
One thing I was thinking of is the Andy, which is a dress by Vicky Sews English, and I have that pattern. So I don't know that I would make the dress, but I really like the top half of it. So I was thinking I could make that without the thumb hole spaces. I don't think I need that in this situation. The other thing I could make is another Adrian blouse from Friday Pattern Company. It, that is a bit of a fabric hog, but I might be able to manage it and I could even sort of downslice the sleeves a tiny bit if I needed to. I think that would be really gorgeous in this color and really um, a great addition to my wardrobe, really practical. So yeah, I might do that. So that's a possibility. So what do you think? Put below if you think so. For the orange fabric, do you think the Andy or do you think the Adrian? Andy or Adrian? Okay, let me know. Next I have this beautiful Liberty Silk from Minerva. And full disclosure, I have not been a good person and I, have suppo I was supposed to make something from this like a year ago and I still haven't done it. And I, I, I owe them a blog post. I'm sorry, Minerva. Uh, I, I, this is the last thing I received from them. I haven't got anything else since. I haven't requested anything else since because um, you know, and then I requested them the other day and they said, oh, you still owe us a blog post for this. And I'm like, oh God, you're right, I do. Oops, sorry. So this is beautiful Liberty Silk Crepe. And it's this awesome print. It's beautiful. I'm intimidated by this fabric. I'm intimidated sewing with silk. I haven't done it before. I, I wanna get some spray starch because I feel like if I can make it more firm, I know you, I, I do have the, the very fine Microtex needle. I also have um, very fine pins. I've heard cutting through tissue paper to keep it. I got myself a brand new blade. So if you have any silk tips besides those or ones that you, out of those that you found particularly um, essential, please let me know. I have a plethora of possibilities for this. So initially I was gonna do the Coville dress for this. If you remember, I made a 12 of it last year and I, I didn't love it. I didn't love it. And I don't think that I wanna take this beautiful Liberty Silk for that specific pattern. I would make that pattern again from something a little like very drapey, which of course this is drapey, but I don't think that's what I wanna make with this. So I have a couple possibilities. My possibilities are, oh, and here are a couple of my requirements. Uh, because this is my first time sewing with silk, I'm a little bit intimidated on closures like buttonholes, zipper. I, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not like 100% no, but I'm kind of looking at things that maybe don't require that so that I can, <laughs> so that I can just focus on sewing with the silk. I can't remember how much I have of this. I think it's two meters. I'm pretty sure it's two meters. Okay, so some possibilities. Some possibilities are, I bought the Anna dress by By Hand London, classic. I bought that during her sale just before Christmas or just after Christmas, I can't remember. I've always loved that dress. I've always seen people make it and it always looks gorgeous. It could be beautiful in that. Uh, would I get a lot of wear out of it is the question. But then again, how much wear do you get out of silk anyway? Like isn't a silk dress probably a fairly niche <laughs> wardrobe item? So maybe I wanna make something special with it knowing that I'm not gonna wear it very often. Food for thought, we shall see. Another one is the lowest dress by Tasuti. I'm always drawn to that dress. I've never bought it, but every time it comes up on Pinterest, which is often, I always think, oh, that's gorgeous. That's I love the deep V-neck. I love the the sort of not fit and flare, but like the the style lines that that sort of hug into the waist and then and then you know flow down from there. So that's a possibility. Uh, does that require a zipper? I don't think. Oh, it's a side zip. That's why I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> side zip. But I mean, I'm brave. I'm brave. I can do it. It's just, do I want to do it? Okay, then there's the Pima or the Pema by Oz Patterns, another French designer. I just discovered it on, on Instagram. Now, some of the pictures, if I had just seen the first few pictures, I probably would not have been interested in this pattern. But um, looking at a few more, it was actually the one picture that was put on Pinterest that I went, oh, it's, it's a wrap 
And if I did it either short sleeves or maybe, maybe um, elbow length sleeves with an elastic, maybe I would get some use out of that. And obviously not long, like probably knee length, above or below the knee, depending on how much fabric I have. Could be that. And then I had a couple of Berta options. I have a lot of options for this one. <laughs> I have a lot of options, so feel free to give me a couple of possibilities in your mind. So I was looking at this Berta tunic. This is from last June. I was looking at this tunic, which very easily could be a dress. No clasps or anything required. I thought that was pretty, just a tiny little gather, very practical. There's some button loops, but not button holes. I could see myself getting a fair amount of use out of that. So that's one possibility. Then I could go the opposite way and go simple, simple, simple. This is Berta Easy um, 22020. And like, this is just simple as pie, right? It's just elastic, elastic. But there's something to be said for letting, letting the fabric shine. Probably not that one, but you never know. And then there's this one on the cover of Berta. This is April, 2022. And I thought that was pretty. Again, no, no closures except, except at the wrist, although they look like they're, if they're not ornamental, they certainly could be ornamental. There's some really pretty patterns in this one. Some really pretty patterns. Um, but where's this one that I'm looking for? There it is again. But that could be nice. And I could probably get some use out of it. I could add a little belt either in the self fabric or I have a braided leather belt that I've had forever from J. Crew, <laughs> um, which would also work with that. So maybe. And then I have this book. If you'll remember, I got this Nanny Eero book. It's Atelier Nanny Eero. And I got this book at New Noia in Barcelona, which is a beautiful fabric shop that covers all Japanese fabrics and also other fabrics as well, not just Japanese fabrics. Lots of things that are maybe a little bit harder to find, a little more niche. And they very kindly gifted me this book. Um, I picked two patterns that, maybe three. So I could do this amazing, amazing dress. I don't know that it would suit me, but gosh, is it amazing. Like, it's just so cool. Like it would just make the fabric the star. Look at the pin tucks. Look at the pin tucks here. And what I thought too is I could change the neckline. Like I could make it a V neckline so that it's not so, you know, up to here. I don't find that this flatters my face. It makes me look a little bit uh, jaw heavy, <laughs> for lack of a better term. <laughs> Um, I like these culottes. Do I want to make pants with the silk? Probably not, to be honest, but they're very nice. I could do them with something else. And then the other one I was looking at here, where it's gathered on the sides. And let me see if I find a good copy. So here. Now, I wouldn't make it so oversized, but I kind of like the shape of it. That's kind of cool too. So let's narrow it down to three. Let's narrow it down to three right now, because that's easier, right? I would say the three that I'm thinking of for this silk is either the Anna from By, the, yeah, the Anna from By, uh, By Hand London, pardon me, or the Lois by Tasudi, if I can be really brave. Or, I really like this tunic. I think this tunic is super cool. So tell me between those three, which ones you like. Or the Pema, the Pema by Oz. Okay, one of those four. Let me know which one you like. I have to change my battery, one sec. Okay, so the last three are actually from orders that I have on the way. I have three sets of fabric on the way. One is from Fabric Site, which is a sustainable fabric supplier here in Catalonia. 
I've had a bit of a, an issue with them. It took them a week to, no, more than a week, to email me to tell me one of the fabrics was out. And they're actually, like I, I, I said, <laughs> I kind of joked that like I literally could walk there in this time and get it myself because it's just up the coast. <laughs> anyway, so we'll see how that turns out to see if I can recommend them or not because right now I'm not super impressed. But we'll see what happens when the fabric comes and everyone, you know, all businesses have little blips that happen. So I don't want to make a rush, rash judgment, but that's just the full truth of the matter. So from them, I have some beautiful teal sweatshirting. I'll put in a picture that's on its way. So for this one, I was thinking of making either another Lindsay from Vicky Sews. You remember I made this last year in like a gray and, uh, and burgundy combo. I was thinking of making a solid color one uh, and maybe size up a little bit. I might make that as part of a set and do a pair of jogging pants as well. Uh, or some sort of zip front sweatshirt. So I have the Lumia sweatshirt from Green Style Patterns. I made that last spring and it, that also has really nice style lines. I like all the details. It can be a hoodie, although I'm actually not really big on hoodies, so I probably wouldn't do the, the hoodie part, but yeah, so it could either be the Lindsay or the Lumia. So let me know, know but down below, Lindsay or Lumia. Okay, and the last one is called the Mattis Check in Wool and Cotton. This is from the Fabric Sales. So you guys know how much I love the Fabric Sales. Uh, and they are sending me a chunk of fabric to do a partnership. Now that's the one from Fabric Side I purchased. This one is sponsored, it hasn't come yet. So I'm hoping, I know they're very busy with their January sales. So I'm really hoping it comes soon because I want to get sewing. I found some beautiful fabrics. I cannot wait to show you guys, but this one is a wool cotton blend and it's like a shirting and it's perfect time to have now because it's you know good to have something a little bit warmer and so for this one i'm i'm fairly sure that i want to make the gallery tunic from liesl and co this is a pattern that i've had for years it's actually the first garment i ever made for myself i made three different versions i've made a shirt version a tunic version and a dress version in three different fabrics and i just love it and i have another tartan version in red that I bought, I bought the fabric at Fabricland, um, and I wore it so much, and I probably didn't do a great job on this, on like sealing the seams and stuff like that. So it frays pretty bad. I still have it, but it's almost at the point that I can't wear it outside. Like to be totally honest, and it's right on the seam. I'm not quite sure what I can do. I mean, I can do something to mend it, but it's still looking a little bit rough around the edges. So I was thinking I could do another one of those and it would be very kind of nostalgic. Actually, to be honest, that, that would be also really nice and silk. Hmm. That would also be really nice and silk. Yeah, this silk is gonna be <laughs> really hard to decide. Really hard to decide. I'm interested to hear what you guys say about that. Uh, or for that same wool and cotton blend, I could do a different shirt, like a full shirt pattern. Lisa and Co. also have, I think they call it the, the, recital, the recital shirt. Um, I have a ton of shirt patterns. I could do a Cali shirt with it. Um, yeah, so the question is popover or full button down shirt? Popover or button down shirt? Okay, you guys let me know. Okay, so those are my immediate plans. I have lots more fabrics downstairs, but these are the ones that I wanted to pull out and get started with right away. So please let me know your thoughts. I'm absolutely dying to hear your opinions. Thank you so much for visiting. Uh, if you love sewing and knitting and you're not subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button. I would love for you to join me on this journey. And if you enjoy this video, please give it a like because it really does help for other people, other sewists to see my work if you like it. YouTube really looks at that and goes, oh, a sewist really likes this. I'm gonna show it to other sewists and it makes a huge difference to the channel. So thanks so much guys. And uh, that's all for me. I hope that wherever you are, the sun is shining and you are sewing or knitting or doing whatever makes your crafty heart happy. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Are you giving me side eye?